Okay, I'm gonna redo this first video. The first time I did it, it looked like I was stoned. Uh, eyes were closed, I was just tired. Um, today, we're gonna show one of the first processes in my car I call the Interceptor, the 80 Trans Am. Uh, we're gonna put a fiberglass front end of a 77 on there. Start with, uh, we got a subframe replacement that's lighter. Uh, it actually comes with Mustang 2 spindles, uh, which I didn't order. I actually bought some control arms with spindles and it turned out they were for a Mustang 2. Uh, I was told they were for a second generation F body. So I uh, tried to make lemonade out of lemons and I found this subframe from Checkered Racing right here. It bolt in process to your subframe. Uh, the one reason why I chose it basically was it was a bolt-in process Plus the way they do the alignment by turning the heim joints in the upper or lower control arms gives you a lot more adjustability on the alignment um, I've seen some with slotted frames in the upper control arm to adjust the alignment But uh, if you go to the racetrack and somehow hit a bump or Do a wheel stand come down a hard it could shift that bolt which mess up your alignment and uh, then you might be done racing for the weekend. With this set up here, you ain't gonna mess up the alignment unless you bend something severely. Um, plus the uh, fact I can get reproduction parts from the checkered racing in case something does go bad. Be a lot easier than having control arms I don't know what they fit. Or someone else's product, like I said, that, you know, that was the main reason why it was the alignment issue in a factory bolt-in subframe versus a universal subframe. So, um, just going on here, uh, waiting on the front coil springs and shock shocks because I don't know the spring rate I'm going with or exactly what brand of shock I'm going to go with. So, uh, right now, photo here. Actually substituted some old lawnmower blades for the shocks just to hold everything in place. So when we do install the subframe, we can actually make it into a rolling chassis. So today, like I said, we're going to start putting the spindles on. We're going to separate them from the control arms that I purchased from somebody. Uh, they do come with wheelwood brakes, which is the reason why I bought it. Uh, the car, I, the Interceptor, I actually worked on back in 2014 uh, from a previous owner brought in the shop I worked at. And I installed the brakes from the firewall all the way out to each four wheels. Uh, but we used the factory brakes up front and had a wheel with drum or disc brakes on the rear with the parking brake assembly. So going with the wheelwood system, that's the reason why I bought the control arms. Uh, thought they were for a second generation F body, but they weren't. And uh, so, like I said, trying to make lemonade out of lemons, that's what we did. It was gone with this new subframe, which is going to take about 200 pounds off the front end of the car. As you can see with the mock-up engine, that it is a traditional Pontiac engine. 